everybody here already knows the deal. A little red button pop up. And there guess it what? is. You no, know what that means? Live. That means we are live. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another Pin the Gas podcast. And what an honor it is to have all these lovely people on today, right? So I got my man, Mark <laughs> Sherman, uh, my man, Daniel Shoemaker, and of course, Cora. What is going on, Cora? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. How about y'all? I'm Listen, I, I'm good. I've been looking forward to this ever since we met in, in, in New Jersey, right? So <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just telling Daniel and Mark, uh, me and you had a video chat. It was on there for like an hour and a half, and it was it was a proper time. It was good. It was, yeah, <laughs> really, really good. So, yeah, man, uh, let's get into this. I'm excited. I already know Mark's excited. Daniel's excited, and of course, Cora. And I see your doggies in the background again. Yes, yeah. the the little white one. He'll pop up in a second to you know broadcast himself because he's like, <laughs> it's all about me, you know. The last what kind of dogs are they back? There? I'm trying to see them and see what they are. Um, so the big one there, that's Coda. He is a South African Mastiff. Wow. So he's 180 pounds of just fluff and um a lap baby the little white one that's currently running in to is. attack him that's alpine um we believe he's at an american bulldog no idea and then my old soul boy he's uh laying down somewhere <laughs> he's a you'll see him pop up he'll walk up in a minute probably to bark at me and um he's like a german shepherd australian shepherd mix no idea nice he's a high 57s <laughs> the good boy. He's the good boy breed. Ah, she said the Heinz 57. That's good. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, Cora Leonard, what is going on? What an honor. I, I said this before we went live to, to have you on. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, tell us the beginnings. Like, how did you get into motorcycles to begin with? Um, the motorcycles or the dirt bike side? Mm. Um, let's do, <laughs> let's start from the very beginning. How did you oh. get introduced to motorcycles to begin with? So it was like 2012, 2013, roughly. Uh, my parents found a dirt bike on the side of the road for sale. And it was just on a whim. None of them, nobody in my family's into bikes. They had three wheelers uh, in their younger age and whatnot. But they were just like, oh, let's get you get our daughter a dirt bike. You know, she sucked at basketball. You know, what else can we do? Just put her on this. She'll ride it. And uh, two weeks later, we went to our first race. I sucked at it, though. We were sitting there. Literally, my mom and I looked at each other and we were like, why are we here? <laughs> like, I, I can't do this. I was like, I got lapped twice, twice in four laps. I only did two laps. Okay. That's how bad I sucked. And then, um, like a month later, we went to another one and we came home with a first and a second in the beginner's class with like a full gate. So it was like, all right, well, we'll, we'll give her a try. And, uh, it kind of just kicked off from there. And we went to Loretta's for the first time in 2015. And then we went back in 16 and then I took a break for a minute and then we went back in, um, 19. So we did all those minios and whatnot and, um i've always had a street bike since i was 16. i had my motorcycle license before i could even drive a car um i don't know if they can do that anymore because of me but uh, i found a loophole and we decided we're like well hey you know they took our women's pro class away in motocross and i was like okay well i'm too small to make it in the men's in motocross i was like no it's not happening a hundred and eight pound girl is not gonna do it i'm sorry it's, it's just a factor. <laughs> so we were like, well, let's give road racing a try. And um, the same week I ordered this, the RC is the week I got paralyzed. Um, and it came in later that week. <laughs> so I like ordered it like that la the Friday before I got hurt. And then it came in like the next Friday. So that was, uh, that was fun. I didn't yeah. expect that one. <laughs> yeah. It happens. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're doing a lot better than, you know, most people in the in your particular situation. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been blessed. I should be I shouldn't be here from the way my accident happened. I really shouldn't be here at all. Yeah, you had some pretty extensive injuries and to come back to where you are now. I mean, you're right. To see that yeah. list of uh 
all those injuries, I was like, wow. And then look at the x-rays. Yeah, they can't explain it. it is, and it's like, so like earlier this year in March, we were racing at Roebling. Okay. And it's like, we're like two, uh, two months in racing at this point and we're just starting out so we're still figuring out like tires suspension and everything so we have no idea what we're doing and um i actually high side and get get ran over and i actually rebroke my left femur and i gained more feeling and function so i went from like almost like belly button line like movement to like now i can move my hips awesome yeah, I, mean, I, can, that's awesome. Hurt, so like, I know. I mean, we were like, how many are we like gonna keep crashing? Photos, but it's not, like, <laughs> I was gonna say again, another high This is yeah. this is consensual, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, I was like, all right, so how many more crashes until I walk again? <laughs> it was our running joke. I'm like, no, I don't want to crash though, but like, um, why did it happen? I don't know, but it happened and I have hip function and stuff now, so I can get off of the bike so we progressed a decent amount after that a lot of people were like ah you should you know call it quits you know you've had a you've had your good start and i was like uh no we're just starting we are just starting yeah no don't don't you dare stop i <laughs> i enjoy hanging out with you at weary races don't you freaking quit don't you dare <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna send joe after you quit it hey don't you dare. <laughs> that's right that's i ain't right. quitting trust me Good. we'll be out there in march racing again for the uh pirelli series because we'll be doing go. that with the endurance and then we'll be doing the moto a well, that's pretty cool. I'm out. This for people that going. don't know what happened wait for a minute people that that watch us that don't know what happened because yeah. then we're talking about an accident and the raving people here don't really know your story yeah um, just kind of if you, if you don't mind just kind of go into what happened to you and Recovery, yeah, absolutely. So appreciate how far you've come. Yeah. So, uh, June nineteenth of twenty twenty two. So almost two years ago now. Um, I was in a really, really bad motorcycle wreck. You know, we all make dumb choices on the street, and we learn from them at one point. And um, I was riding, I just got released from surgery on this wrist um, from a motocross incident. And uh, I was like, oh, well, I just fixed the the R1. I was like, we'll go ahead and we'll go on this group ride with a bunch of our buddies, like no biggie. We'll just go out and have an absolute ball of a time. And we get out there and I'm usually one of the pack leaders, uh, me and another dude usually transition. And we usually set the pace for everybody, kind of pick out the route. And we discussed it. And he was like, well, I'll start the lead. Um, and I was like, okay, that's fine. So we start going out and riding. And it's just this one straight, but there's a bridge. Okay. And um, I made a really dumb decision to try to pass him. And he's also on an R1, but he's on a newer one. Um, and I came over the bridge going like 190 and I caught air. And when I landed, I got head shake. Okay. Thankfully, motocross taught me, okay, apply the throttle, you know, straighten it out. Cool. So I was able to fix that. No biggie. Fix that in, in absolutely no heartbeat. But there's a slight curve right after that. So I was like, all right, two options. We can either throw the bike, try to make the curve. I don't have enough weight to throw it. So I was like, all right, we're better off being hard on the brakes on the asphalt till we get in the grass into the ditch that looked very well maintained for the most part. It looked maintained at that speed anyway. So I'm probably like 186 going into the grass. I there was not a lot of time to like break more. And it was a pretty straight line. And I was like, tree line's pretty decent far away. We'll be good. No biggie. So I start just using the motor to help slow it down. I hit a rain trench. And the rain trench pretty much launched the bike and I into a light pole going at 180. And um, the bike and I finally separated. I flew another 30 foot and skipped like a rock on red clay and then flew another 15 foot into uh, briar bushes and conveniently a fire end bed. 
so add insult to the wound. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Yeah, so that was fun. So I had dead ants in my hair for like a week because you can't shower, so you're just stuck. <laughs> but so when the accident happened, though, I wasn't scared. I didn't panic. I didn't scream at first or anything. I was just because it, it was just silent. Like every I didn't black out or nothing. So I knew exactly what happened. I was like, OK, this was bad. This was really bad of an accident. I was like. I am probably going to die. And it didn't scare me, though. That was the biggest thing. It didn't scare me if I did die. Because thankfully, thanks to my parents and their support, I lived my life the way I wanted to. They helped me support anything that I put 110% into. So we pushed for everything. And I lived my life the way I wanted to. And I was happy. I was content. And I know a lot of people struggle with that same feeling. But I was happy because... I was who I am. And after a minute, I did like a small prayer for my family, not for me to survive. Cause I was like, you know, it's up, it's up to somebody to decide that. But I did a prayer for my family that if I did pass away that, you know, they wouldn't have such an issue or a hard time trying to move on from a situation like that. And um, I had a very spiritual moment I had, I believe to be my uh, adopted grandfather that I grew up with. Mr. Bill was his name. My race numbers are for him. And um, I heard his voice. And I've never had something like this. And I just started crying after because I got a hug from behind and was told, it is not your time yet. You have bigger, better things to come. And I was like, okay, well, now we have to um, try to stay alive. Now we got to fight like Sparta. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're fighting. It was yeah. like, because I had a punctured lung, so I already couldn't breathe. I was losing blood. I had internal bleeding. Like, we had so much going on. And thankfully, one of my good friends, Michael Purvis, um, was a respiratory nurse. So he was able to like hold my neck in a certain way and apply pressure on my chest to allow me to breathe enough until the EMS come up. And they have like a whole story of like the chaos that came upon that. But um, without them there and my friend Taylor keeping me stable and making sure I stay awake because I was losing consciousness, without them there, I probably wouldn't be here. I honestly wouldn't. Um, but yeah, in that accident, I obviously broke my back. They called it spinal obliteration. So I'm missing T9 out of my back. It's completely gone. And then all of the little, the little nipples up your spine, all of those are gone. I completely shattered all of them. And then, um, I broke six ribs on my left side. I broke all of, uh, was it 13 on your right side? I broke all of them. I had a completely punctured and collapsed right lung. I had internal bleeding. I had a swollen um, appendix and spleen. Um, I broke all four metacarpals, as you can see the scars, and then the ulna and radius in my left arm, and then my left femur. Um, the only head injury I got was a severed octave nerve in my right eye, so I don't have uh, peripheral, but it's actually starting to come back. Uh, but I didn't have peripheral in this eye for um, quite some time, but we've we've came a long way. Luckily, I got accepted into a program at Shepherd Center here in Atlanta. And I don't think without them, I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing at the extent I'm doing, um, because they really push you to get better like they they want you to in a sense do as best as you can and without them i i wouldn't i don't know if i could so were you a were you a spiritual religious person before this happened was that part of your life uh, so, or did so, you just kind of just kind of um, thought there was but you weren't sure yeah it's kind of happened. like i i believe that there is somebody there's so mm -hmm. many different religions and you know and i i, I do believe i am a christian and wholeheartedly right, but there's so right. many different religions and there's so many different people that 
pray to different things, but I know there is something that created us and we're all here for a reason. It's like, I don't know who though. You know, it's just one of those things and it's confusing at times, but it's like, I always do prayer before I race, ride, you know, I'm like, I don't know who it's for, but I'm doing it. You know, it's kind of one of those things. I don't know. It's hard to explain. No, understandable. Yeah. I mean, you experienced it, uh, you know, firsthand. Uh, not yeah. a lot of people have that kind of uh, experience. So. Yeah. And uh, every time, especially like the first year of being injured, anytime I told somebody about that, that spiritual experience, because I've never had one before. And to have that, I would cry almost every time. When I told my mom in the hospital what had happened, she was on her knees crying because she's like, no way you know, that that happened. She's, she was just baffled that I, in a sense, heard from him because he passed away. Um, 2008 is when he passed away. Um, so I was like nine years old, but he was my buddy. I miss him. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. We, uh, yeah. Uh, what a story, Cora. Like you're, you're, uh, you're a huge inspiration to everybody in the sport, 110% and you, <laughs> are uh the toughest girl uh that i've ever met in my life hands down <laughs> uh, over any guy I, I know guys that aren't even half as tough it's as not you only are. just the toughness it, it's the it, attitude it's not, i it, think that in the mental yes. more your, yes. your mental attitude towards that in yep. life and uh, yeah you handle it and um i believe that helped me a lot yeah yeah i, yeah. I, I, I did too uh, yeah because i was only um 77 days out of injury i was still inpatient at shepherd center okay and i got back on a motorcycle because um my friend taylor was friends and helped out t bex um which is a disability racing team if anybody you know doesn't know that that's listening um he had knew them before my injury like three months before i was paralyzed he met them so it was like weird timing, like everything's kind of fell apart, like fell into place in a weird way. But I had got my day pass, which is, you know, something that I can take and I can like leave the premises with, you know, I, but you, your family has to go through to like training and whatnot to get it. Mm -hmm. So it took a minute. But there was a race at Road Atlanta with Weira for the endurance race and like their normal sprint racing. And we went up to watch. And uh michael p that one of our the manager for the team i kept you know poking him i was like so when are you gonna let me ride when are you gonna let me ride you know my left hand's not even functioning greatly at this point still <laughs> and i was like when are you gonna let me ride like just keep poking and he's like all right fine he's like at the end of the day as long as we can find somebody with a suit and helmet you can wear we'll get you on the bike and i just I lit up and I started crying because I was so happy because I was like, I don't know if I could ride again. Yeah. You know, I didn't know it was an option when I first got hurt because we were like, OK, well, we'll sell the bike, you know, we'll sell the gear and whatnot, because I was like, well, it's it's over. You know, our, our dreams to do the road racing was gone and to get that opportunity to ride that bike that day, only 77 days after injury, I cried. I cried riding. I bet. Yeah, I would have too. I, oh, yeah. All all of us, everybody listening would. I was, he didn't even get I was racing that weekend. Right. I was there <laughs> racing that weekend at Road Atlanta. I was there. I was a yellow plate racing. If I'd have known that, I'd have been like, look, take here. I'm done. Get out of here. This, this no. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> like we that's the i met you that weekend. That was the mm -hmm. weekend you and I met started like we're just hanging out. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Good for you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome what what a, yeah that's that's awesome the, the uh, i'm lost God for bless. words yeah i really am i mean you, you, you are a true inspiration like, that never happens i mean yeah yeah it, that, that it, it just don't. doesn't happen like it's like you and doug henry that's it you know <laughs> right like, well that race team was not in the mp with you Goodness and, gracious. it's pretty cool how um how that paralyzed racing team came along Mm -hmm. So, um, tell people a little bit about that team. So if they don't know, like, um, um, how many races do you do with them in a year? With, um, did you were at Motor America? I remember them being there in New Jersey. Yeah. So, um, the bike experience or T-Bex for short, um, 
So we are a team of disabled riders. They could be from paralysis, amputees, or you have like a nerve deficiency to where you you have a hard time shaking and you need hand controls. So we pretty much help anybody that has um, a disability get back on a bike if that's what they desire, you know, or wounded veterans, you know, we help um, try to adapt bikes for anybody of any age, any injury, you know, we're here to help them. But the bike experience, we had just, they had started the race team before I had met them, but they had started doing the endurance racing um, thanks to the owner, Michael, um, that was able to get some good donations. And they started doing the endurance racing because um, a few of the guys were doing sprint races like here and there, but they weren't like taking it seriously up until, you know, they started doing the endurance racing. And then um, that year that I met them, they actually placed first in the um, relay race um, for the endurance racing with N2. Um, but that's mainly what they focused on. But when I started racing with them, I did the ultra lightweight. Um, it was either just me doing the endurance racing by myself, or I would have um, Joe, which is another team member on there. He would be my co-pilot, and we would we would tag team. I would do an hour, he would do an hour. Um, but otherwise, I mainly focused on sprint racing because for me, I I, I really like the the battle concept because in endurance you kind of get fall into place like it's a practice almost. Um, but no they're they're a really great organization and i would and i am so blessed to be a part of them um because they have helped me along the way they've helped so many other disabled people like we're booked they are booked for the whole year um because they'll rent out like parking lots like big parking lots and they'll like take anybody and we have adapted bikes like ones that are automatic you know if they've never really ridden a bike or if they don't have you know great hand function you know we got cages around them so if they do fall you know they're not falling on the asphalt or getting stuck like we have these specialty made bikes and we'll book events throughout the year and they would come to the events and we'll get them on the bike for the day that's awesome that's awesome do, do, do you guys ever collaborate uh, do you do vet to track you heard of that vet two track? I've, I've heard of it, but I'm not positive or for sure on if they did do anything with them. I'm not hundred yeah. percent sure. Yeah. He's, he's a good buddy of mine, uh, Jim, uh, with him that actually runs it. He, he does a similar thing with, with, with the veterans. Uh, he gets him out there on the track, you know, battling PSTD, all, all that stuff that goes along with the, with the whole military life, right? So yeah. he's, he's he 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 does the same thing. I think it would be awesome if if them two would would, would collide, them two worlds would collide, right? It would be yeah, uh, yeah, a- absolutely great. Again, what an inspiration. I mean, and, and then to so it, it explain to everybody because you know, growing up in the sport, it, there, there's been uh european people over there in like a performance bike magazine i think one guy had lost an arm and a leg and so Mm -hmm. this is back in like 99 he was he was out there on the track right so what pertains into going to in your particular case in your motorcycle what modifications do you actually got to do um for you to actually race yeah so in a sense, it's like almost every other racer, you know, you do your basic modifications, wires and safety wire and, you know, fairings, nah, 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 nah. but for us, we have to um, get the actuator, which can be a Pingle or a Translogic. They're a little uh, electric shifter that gets connected mm-hmm. to the shift shaft, um, depending just on the model um we used the pingle this year but this or this last year but this year we'll be using a translogic so i'm super excited to see the performance on it under a great strain i'm excited um then you adjust the rear brake so we'll connect a longer cable up to the handlebars and put a thumb brake or an extra like a stunt brake in a sense We'll put one up there for the rear brake. I don't have, I didn't have one on this last year, but we're putting on for the bikes for this year. Um, and then uh, we're not strapped in in any means, so we use custom foot pegs. Um, thanks to some people at the um, Army of Darkness. Um, shout out to them. They helped us design um, some magnetic foot pegs that were a huge success this year. Um, in comparison to our previous models. So they are, they have little 
dimples in them and those dimples will install uh, magnets into those dimples and then we'll have like cleats drilled into the bottom of our boots that are capped off and those cleats sit into those magnets so each magnet at least the ones we put on my bike each one's 100 pounds so we got about 200 pounds of magnet on each foot now they still snag up for me anyway because i'll usually drag my foot a lot and we've had to raise custom raised our own foot pegs like we had to make our own brackets and raise everything and find the max lean angle for the tire and we actually have to still add a strip of tape over my foot because i move around so much my foot will pop up sometimes. Um, so we've we've been we got a good plan for this year, and I'm not gonna spoil for that one. We're gonna leave that one for a surprise when we get it done. But we did that for this year, and it was a great success. You know, we didn't have any more issues with my foot coming off or anything, um, unless it's the endurance race, because then I'm on a bike, you know, for two hours, and it's something's gonna come loose on my feet because we're just moving around so much. And then the part that hold our knees in because we're not strapped in, we'll lay a cinch strap or a Velcro strap on the seat. And then they'll put us on the bike and then we'll pull that strap over our legs and tighten our knees to the gas tank. Um, and then the only other thing I did was add uh, foam blocks on the gas tank, um, kind of like a gas tank extender, mm -hmm. but ours are raised up to hold right on top of the knees to hold my knees in place. Because for me, when I'm getting off the bike, I'll like shift one hip or the knee into that foam piece to help support that that leg into the foot peg to where I can get off of the bike properly and be able to know that, hey, I am stable. I'm not going to come off the bike. Um, so once we figured out all that stuff, oh, we had it. We had it going because I was like, all right, I can do this. <laughs> it's time to get some wins. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mama's happy. Oh yeah, Mama was very happy. I was like, "All right, we're starting. We're we're cooking. All right, but we gotta start baking. That's okay, it. Okay, we gotta start baking. That's it. And I'm getting ready to cook something good for all you guys <laughs> and women out there on the track. So be prepared. <laughs> that's right. That, that's good. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So, uh, 2023. Uh, did you race it all in 2023? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the 2023 <laughs> season, Cora. How did that go? Oh, well, like I said earlier, we had a rough start at the beginning because we were still trying to figure out everything because we're like, no idea of anything. Because I was like, coming from motocross, this is a whole different scene. There's a whole lot more into it. And I'm like, okay, all right, this is going to be cool. So after we started developing some stuff, we started to win. And we started to clock off time. So I made a lot of people butt hurt. Uh, I can attest year. to that. I heard the conversations. I was sitting there in the paddock and I'd hear That's people awesome. talking shit. I'm like, you're talking, really? Yeah. yeah, right? That's a really good thing. I was yeah. like, yeah. you're really going to run your mouth against that? Like, come on. Yeah, well, we had we had a few issues. So, like, I start in the back. Like, I always have front grid because we were in a yeah. points lead. But I'll start dead last or in hot pit always, every single round, other than at um, Talladega. They'll let me start in my grid line, but all the way to the grass line, which worked beautifully. It worked. Oh, I was there. Cause I then, know. <laughs> yeah, because then he can step off and run. He'll literally run into, the, like, the, the abyss of grass because he's like, I'm not going to get ran over. He's like, I'm not dumb. So he'll run away, and th those guys are awesome for allowing us to do that. Because starting dead last, especially when you have a grid of, like, 10, that sucks. Yeah. That that sucks, because I'm fighting from dead last, and especially we'll be mixed up with the SVs, and i got to pass them to catch up to my guys. And it's it can be a nightmare, but we were able to come home with eight regional championships and nice. two well second done. regions. Yeah, so we had a we had a greatly successful year. Um, endurance racing, we did okay. Um, we were kind of just doing it just to get good seat time and good practice. Um, and it was a great experience because I got I got a lot of learning that I did in that. Well, you uh, definitely you iron well I, iron person rode Atlanta <laughs> got a lot a lot of seat time. Shut up! You got two hours straight. At Road Atlanta, all you had to do was go, I'm in, fill this thing up so I can go now. 
Yeah. No, seriously, we did it there. We did it at uh, the only we only had a teammate in like two or three rounds. I know one round was at Roebling and then the other one was at Pitt. The rest of the rounds like Summit and stuff. I did all those by myself. Do you, you like that track? Pit? How do you like that track, Summit? You I like love it. Track? I like it. Yeah. I really like. Other than One like, I crashed. Track. I crashed oh. in that endurance with like ten minutes left of the race. The tires were dead, and I already backed <laughs> off pace. And I was like, okay, I should be cool. I'm good. I'm good. And we go in uh, one of the sweeping right corners in that back section, and the tires were like, bye. And I was like, oh. We're, Is that the one after going. you come up the hill and you go over to the curb and coming down into the carousel? Mm, Is that right? No. Or that farther through the carousel already? Um, so. Sorry. There's, there's no more more going on. It. It. I love it. It's I UFC look, in the background. Honestly, Cord, li- li- listen, everybody. When, when I had a video chat with Cord, next thing I know, we're sitting there talking and the white dog you guys see in the background just straight up jumped in her lap. It was awesome. So <laughs> I got yeah. my money on the white dog. Yeah. <laughs> I got wait. I got money on Chris's dog if you bring it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're Liars the crackheads. Yeah, he's covered in drool now. That's great. Because he he's sleeps awesome. with me. Oh, yes, like, oh, he's yeah. so Come say hi. Come say hi. Come say hi. This is my say alley hi. pine. He my little snuggle bun. Oh, there he's he like, goes. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm going to go back. We we fighting. And there, there's the big boy. Oh, 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 boy. He's beautiful. That's not a That's dog. Cute. That's a dinosaur. What yeah, and I just got drooled on. Thank you, sir. What do you feed the neighbor's kids? <laughs> yeah, I, Halloween. That's I love the it. dog from Sandlot. What are we doing? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that's Hercules. <laughs> yeah, he's a big snuggle bun though in bed. Oh I'm my goodness! You, anybody else walking in there looks like a snack. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you should have saw the people that came and delivered. I got a new fridge and dishwasher in yesterday, and nice. dude, these guys' eyes when they walked in. I'm blocking the dogs because I was like, I don't want them to like freak out. Dude, their eyes went massive when they realized the big dog. They're like, oh, like, you, you no. on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they've joked around. They're like, you know, you weigh like 96 pounds. Why don't we just throw you on Coda and he'll just be your little personal ride everywhere. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> yes, we are. It, 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 it'd it'd yes. be awesome to do a track walk on them. Yeah. Yeah, That's absolutely. Hmm, why not? The, well. well We'd have to figure out how old's the guy, how old's the pot belly big pig that showed up at Motor America? You remember oh, that? how old is that? Yeah, how I old was, is that? We I can put him put you on that too. Oh, <laughs> good gracious. I don't know. How old was he? I think that, he was like eight years old. He was older. That, okay, for everybody who doesn't know, someone racing Moto America, I think it was Twins Cup. I think he was one of those Twins Cup guys, yeah. showed up with this pot belly pig that looked to be about 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. This thing was huge. They and the had a ramp. A, yeah, the guy made a, like a 10-foot ramp so that the, the pig could walk up back into the motorhome. Yes. Like, me, me, Cora, Joe, uh, De- everybody in like that whole like ghetto customs like pirate mm-hmm. crew. Like we're all awesome. hanging out. We're looking at this and like, what the heck just walked out? And then he said, the guy's like trying to like guide it, guide him up. The, it's mm-hmm. all was great. Get a saddle. We'll put you on him and see what happens. Hey, we'll let's do it. Dude, let's yeah. make you know a big race. Do. We'll probably just get a ball and just throw it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's awesome. Noodles, noodles, goes flying, noodles you know, goes flying. Noodles goes flying. Hey, we, I think awesome. we may have just figured out a new rodeo like sport. Yeah. Let's do. Do they have the kids on the sheep and stuff? Why not? Why not? I, I, will, I, I'll put you on the mastiff real quick. Like let's real tie her up. Like let her go out the shoot. Let's go. Dude, Joe Fincher wants to make side sidecar racing with wheelchairs, and I'm like, yeah. no. It's like yes. the downhill for like yes. mountain bikes. But he's yeah. like, let's do sidecars, and we'll have like a non paralyzed person be the monkey, and then we'll use your wheelchair as like the main thing, and we'll like make a cage and everything. And I was driving, like, Joe, you're insane. Monkey. If if you're driving, I will be the monkey. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I'd be your monkey too for sure. I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, let's go till the holla. Let's yes, go. Yes, let's do it. I'll, look, I'll dress. I will dress up as a Viking. I'm even though I'm cutting my hair in March. Nice. I'll dress up. I don't care. <laughs> so what's what's going to happen now in 2024? What are your plans? 
Oh, we got some plans. Um, so as of right now, well, literally last night, we finally got a Ninja 400. Let me tell you, they are impossible to find right now. Can't find them. Yeah, you can't find. Dude, I came across this one on Cycle Trader. Okay, it was a personal buyer. Okay, it had forty-seven miles on it, and she's had it for a year. What? She wanted, she wanted fifty-five for it, and I was like, "Mine." I was like, "I'm driving. I'm coming to get it." Like, you are. That is my bike now. Like, that's it motorcycle was, abuse. Yeah, nice. yeah. I was like, "Why do you get a bike?" But I don't blame her. So when we drove up there, and it's five hours one way to Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh yeah. So that was a long haul for me because my back was like, "Ugh, I'm gonna murder you." Uh, but so we get up there, and dude, people can't drive in this area that she lives, and I'm like, "No wonder why you didn't want to ride the bike on the street here." I was like, "I don't blame you," but she is gonna come to one of my races this year, so I'm like, "Cool, awesome. yeah, awesome." awesome. That's all. I wish you'd have known. I'm right in North Carolina. I could have picked it up and brought it to you. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm in right over Virginia. I mean, dude, I'm like an hour from Greensboro. I'd be, yeah, it's not a problem. But anyway, but yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so we got that bike for Moto America Junior Cup. Awesome. Yeah. So as far as I know, we're in the clear to do it. The only thing that they told us I had to have was landing gear that's a non-penetratable item because they don't want somebody on the track when the grid starts. Like, that's completely understandable. Yeah. Completely fine. And we have a few different models, but I had to have the bike. We've been waiting for this bike for, like, two months trying to look for one. Like, I've had a deposit at a dealership here for a minute. Like, yo, what y'all look. Like, I don't care. Use new. I was like, I just need something with low mileage. That's all I need. I don't want a high mileage one. And that's all we kept finding. Um, so, yeah, when we came across that and we got that, and I was like, right, cool. We ordered a bunch of parts, so we're super excited about it. Um, but then we're also doing the N2 Endurance again, and then we'll run the Pirelli series with uh, Weira as well, just because I got to I gotta keep it up with uh, my club racers. <laughs> that's right. Are you going to run the KTM for that, or are you going to keep with the Ninja? 50-50. So the Ninja is going to be in particularly for that because I don't want to put too much on it, but I also need to get good practice on this bike. But the RC fits in one of the classes because I usually race ED and F. Yeah. And the RC fits only in, or the Ninja doesn't fit in the F. So mm -hmm. the RC races the F. So what I'll probably do is just do one race on the Ninja and then the other two on the... Um, on the RC, just to keep the mileage down. But the RC is mainly for the endurance racing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting that amount of miles on the 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 Ninja to do all that. So, mm -hmm. hang out. I like when we get done with this, I'll, I'll talk to you about some of the tech things that people have said to us at Moto oh, America. Oh Lord, I, That's no, 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 you're fine. <laughs> just things to watch for as you're building this bike. Yeah, because we're not we're not modding the motor or anything. The only thing we're to throw in is a slipper clutch. I know they come with one, but for me, I I really needed the function good, so we're gonna yeah. put a better one in. But like, we're not cutting into the motor. We're just doing just a stock motor. We're just getting our feet wet this year, so we're not expecting too much. But we're gonna do our best because we're gonna attempt to do every six like all six rounds of it. Um, and our goal is to qualify and at least do well. We're not expecting, you know, first or anything. We're just, yep, it's our first year. They're not, they've never had a paralyzed person att attempt to do a complete season. They've had one, but he, he was walking at the time he had did it. So I was like, that's eh, a little different, but they've never had somebody with this level of injury in a sense to attempt to do it. So have you, as, uh, Joe Pomeroy, have you talked to mm -hmm. him about anything? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I figured you had, but I was just like, I there's that name, and then there's a gentleman that runs track days with us. Um, I can't remember Tony? his name. No, Eddie something. He's on a six thirty six. He's in the. We call him our. He's he is our enhanced rider. He mm -hmm. uh he does track days with us, and he's in the same situation that you are mm -hmm. and uh and he's in i'll i'll message you on facebook i'll send you okay. to him just be like hey this guy does the same thing and then i've, I've found there's another guy that was on a tuano and blah 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 whatever yeah but, no that's 
That's awesome. I'm pumped. I'm so happy. Oh, it's so cool. I know. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. And like I said, you know, and that's just my biggest issue is I always place to like high expectations for myself. And I have a really hard time with it because I'm like, yeah, we're going to get top five, you know, top 10. And it was like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And I'm like, I have to like step back. And it's like, we're just going to do what we can. Like, I'm hoping for that. Like, that is my goal. But if I keep saying that, then I'm going to get disappointed if it doesn't happen. <laughs> get on the grid at Road Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. Just qualifying, dude, that's it. Just get qualifying grid, is hard enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. That that's awesome. That means I will be able to hang out in in Atlanta this year because I'll be oh, there, yeah. and I'll, obviously I'll be at Jersey again. So I'm, I'm coming. I'm going to be there be too. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's going to be it's going to be awesome, man. The whole gangs and what's going to be there, Mark. Uh, I don't know. Are are you coming to Atlanta too, Mark? Uh, no, probably not Atlanta. Okay. Uh, right. Maybe Mid Ohio will definitely be a Jersey. All um, right. Well, Jersey's going to be a big blowout, right? It's it, it, oh, is that the guy last... got that new asphalt too. I know. I, I, seen. Know, I was like, ooh, because every I was worried about that track when I first went up there, and everybody was complaining about um, the bumps, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, we might have to skip that one. I was like, uh, I don't, I don't know about bumps. We ain't gotten that far into the technology <laughs> of like stuff like that. We've just figured out good. that, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're hoping that you know. We're not gonna have too many bumpy tracks this year, just just so we can get the technology figured I mean, out. That be better. Probably one of the best. I mean, not saying they're bigger crowds, but they're just getting more involved. It seems like NJ yeah. has always been like a blowout. Yeah. Road Atlanta, a great time. Road Atlanta can get crazy. It's oh not yeah. Nearly, it's not nearly as much fun as it used to be, but the the crowd's coming back. Yeah. Thankfully. But y'all ain't had me there yet, right? So when I That's show right. up this year, it's you know, okay, a proper mega. You don't even know. <laughs> look, y'all weren't shoot, there for the Shoot, it would have went to, uh, uh, shoot, what well, year was it? It was 2022. Um, The year I went up there when I was still able-bodied. Yeah. Like, I was there for the Moto A around, and I didn't, I didn't know anybody. We were just right. there. We, we rode our bikes up, so I rode up on the R1 and whatnot, and just went up there and watched, and we met a few people, um, and I was like, I, I can do this. I can do this. Because we went up there to kind of scope it out, see what it was like, and I was like, I can do this. <laughs> it's a lot more attainable than people think. Yeah. It, it honestly is like when everybody like when I first started, like everybody like in a sense like talked down to me about it. They're like, nah, you know, you just need to stick to club racing and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I was like, I mean, that's cool if I can't. If I can't do Moto America, you know, that's one thing. If they tell me no, it's gonna suck. But I was like, you know, we'll still ride, you know, and hopefully down the road they'll change their mind. But uh no, I was like, No, we're pushing for this. It's my it was my goal prior injury, it's still my goal now. You know, it, it might not be quite the same as it would have been able body, but hey, we're still doing it. Facts. You're doing yeah. it. That that's what counts. You know, yeah, yeah. you can't listen to everybody. No. I yeah. mean uh, yeah, it, I think when they talk about more is when people come in there the hands and they're like, Yeah, I could be I could be a Jake Gagne. Well, not really, but you know. You really yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah. On the I mean, PlayStation. Yeah, on, on, on. There, like, oh, I can do this. This is real easy. I can just get on the bike and I can yeah. win more regular races. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you hear that a lot in the crowd, but oh, oh. I know everybody says it, you know, and it's like most people like prior injury. Um, people would try to race me, and I'm like, I don't know about all that. I was like, we shouldn't do that. Uh, but we make dumb choices. But um <laughs> um no, it was this year in particular, we we just, or this last year, we grew a lot, and I made people realize, I was like, I'm not playing around. I don't play around with stuff like this. I was like, one, it's too much money, and two, I have too much of a passenger drive for it. Like, we're, we're going full blown. Like, we're going to do everything we can to achieve this, because without riding, I don't know where I would be right now, honestly. Yeah. The same. Well, good for you though. That so that brings up so Chris and I always ask guests. So on an off day, what's an off day for you that doesn't have anything to do with racing? Like, what shows do you watch? What movies do you watch? You I know, your, so what's like a down day for you. A down day would be like going to the gym, hanging out with the dogs, uh, going out with family, trying to do stuff with them. Um, I like to go to like 
random little road trips to places and just try new things. We've always liked doing that. Like spontaneous, we're very spontaneous people. We don't plan anything. We just do it. Like we'll be like sitting here on like a Friday night or something. And my dad will be like, Hey, do you want to go uh, whitewater rafting? Like this was still like a legitimate thing. Like, Hey, you want to go whitewater rafting? He's like, we would need to leave like now to be there for <laughs> the next day. And I'm like, what? I was like, like you've been you... sitting on a couch googling this for the last five minutes. Hey, you know what? Let's go whitewater rafting. And we did. We drove up to Tennessee to go whitewater rafting. The most fun experience, though. Like, hands down, amazing. Where did you, um, did you go to the Okoe? Yeah. Oh, God. The Okoe is legit. Yeah. The Okoe. Yeah. Is... No, it was so much fun. And the the guy, like the, the, the person that, like, uh, in a sense, like, did it for us. Dude, he was so cool. He was having so much fun. Cause like we took it serious, like full on. He's like, you know, he's like, I didn't want to try to dump y'all because he's like, y'all were like doing it good. He's like, y'all need to do this professionally. And I'm like, nah. Nah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's in the water. I can't see in the water. I'm right. good. Yeah. There's sharks down there. I'm good. Worst thing you you're never gonna know. Know. <laughs> turtle, that's it. You're fine. Hey, 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 you like hey. That, snap me. There's sharks yeah. down there. Tur- turtles are my thing, though. I'll let a turtle snap me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like turtles. Well, oh, wait, you just got hip feeling back. We're not trying to mess anything else up, okay? <laughs> there you go. Look, I wish I had my little Rossi turtle. I got, I got a VR46 turtle in my other room. Uh, yeah. I'm a, <laughs> next time I have you on core, I'm going to have it in here so I can be like, look, here's my turtle. Hi. Hey, hey, turtles. I mean, seriously, like, I got turtle galore oh, everywhere because that, that's, that's always been our thing. Favorite Ninja Turtle? Michelangelo. Love it. I, I just loved his attitude growing up in the original cartoons. I'm like, yes, Michelangelo. You are you are my personality. I love it. Yeah. And they so, love yeah. pizza, too. So. Me too. That's what I was going to ask you. What's your favorite food if you have to go to your go-to? Ah, uh, Japanese, honestly. Okay. I like Japanese style, so I like a lot of sushi or like. Um, Good choice. Um, oh, put me on the spot. Um, like the like little. Hibachi? You like it when they cook in front of you? Well, I don't care about cooking in front of me. It don't bother me if I just get it on a plate or yeah. they cook in front yeah. of me. You know, the little plate thing. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's nice. But um, no, I like um, I like the. Good gracious! It's like the the steamed. It's it's in a rice cake, but it has usually like pork or chicken in it. Like a dumpling. Oh, a dumpling. Yeah, a dumpling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I don't know why I couldn't think of it, but yeah, a dumpling. So I like Hot pork dumpling. dumplings. Yeah, those yeah. are my favorite. Yeah. I love those, but I like sushi. Like I said, Japanese style. No yeah. sushi or California roll, because people do California sushi. roll. Okay, good. California have, roll is too white girl sushi. for me. Okay, roll, that's not, not sushi. That's not California sushi. roll is imitation crab meat, a avocado, a cucumber, yeah. rice. Well, and... Sometimes it's not even it's not even imitation crab meat. It's just a cucumber or whatever. Right. I mean, right. We won't like, put any meat Philly in roll, it. Yeah. Right? A Philly roll with the cream <laughs> cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The Philly roll. I mean, let's be honest. I ain't or like lie. the crab and gruden. The is crab, yeah, right. Is that I like the a Philly roll, roll now, the Philly roll. I like cream cheese. Yeah, so do I. But I like it when they like use like actual crab or lobster in it. It's yeah. really yes. good. Yes. Like and when you find a like a legitimate wasabi. place. Yes. Oh well, I can't do spicy. I got, I got, I got a northern tongue too much. It, okay. it don't like me. <laughs> well, I eat the little wasabi then. Yeah, I got you on that. Yeah, I got you. He's <laughs> shaking That's his good. head. So, so, so listen, Cora, <laughs> celebrity crush. Who is Cora's celebrity crush? Ken Roxon. Who is it? <laughs> Ken Roxon. Dude, he just podium let like the other day. Good yes, he him. did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, I have a story. So we were at oh, um, we, we were at Spring Creek MX, well Millville, um, up in Minnesota. Um, and we were up there for the the pro round, but they had the amateur day after, and I was like, I was on eighty fives. I was slow as heck. I don't know why we did this, but we decided we were we were going to stay to do the amateur round, and we watched the pros and whatnot. Because I'm really good friends with Aaron Plessinger and all of them, because we all grew up racing together. And um, yeah, small world. I'm a I'm a massive Plessinger fan. I, his attitude, I, his time, attitude is is mint. He was like that younger. Mentioned. I'm telling him uh, that guy's in a cowboy hat. 
and long hair no matter what happens. Dude, it's I like the, the the interview with uh what tires you know are you running? And he was like, I don't know what I'm running. I just get on the bike and I race. And I was like, I love that yes, yes. I love that guy. Love that guy. <laughs> I was like, awesome. But so we were out there racing and conveniently like the path back to the track from where our camp campers and stuff were is his rig. Um, and I don't know why that they do this, but man basically stripped just into his underwear. And I was like, I think I found my thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Good I know what you. I like now. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, love so it. yeah that's always been my celebrity crush i've never gotten to talk to him but i've just stared you know like yep daydreams you're like oh, oh well, yeah good for you baby i'm just gonna have on with us today <laughs> <laughs> yeah Get, uh, oh where'd he go oh yeah where is he i had i had jorge lorenzo sitting right here but no uh, <laughs> He fell yeah. down. Hey, yeah, he's a uh, he's a. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not here. Missing not an action. Joke. We're not doing it. No. 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 I'm not doing it. So, uh, Cora books. Uh, I just got done. Uh, me, me and Daniel we're real big into audio books. He's actually turned me on to uh, oh, Adrian Bourdain, right? So I, I listen to his, which is really good. Matthew McConaughey, The Green Light. I just got oh. done. Holy shit! What a fucking book. That's a good one. Really yeah. good. Uh, if you're into like uh, drug cartel, indie car racing, let, let's sell drugs and, and, and support my car racing. Randy Lanier. Listen, that book, and I told Mark to the same thing. It'll blow. It's one of those books where, like, oh, I buy audio books. I'm like, I'll give it another five minutes, right? Because I'm not mm -hmm. reading it, so I'll just read one more chapter, right? Next thing, it's 45 minutes, and and it's I'm looking. It's like 12 o'clock. I got to go to bed, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I've done that numerous times because I'm a really huge book. book nerd. Like in my bedroom, I have I have a stack of books, and I've always I've been. Give it to getting us. older yeah i've i've always enjoyed books but i'm more into like the the action adventure Give fantasy romance go. type okay, okay. So, well what you read right now oh lord um but give us some of your favorites yeah. oh so, so your nice. high recommendations hot rec well it depends on the type of reading that you like to do whatever it let's go matter. um so probably court of thorns is my favorite um, okay. yeah, it's a little more, well, the, the beginning of the series is just more adventure, but then it kind of turns into like this whole romance thing. And it, I'm in book four and it's, 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 it's great. It's like, a, <laughs> it's hard to explain. Are you, have you read the night manager? Do you I've know about that? Yes, I've read the back of the book. I'd seen it at um, um, Barnes and Noble. I've read the back of it, but I didn't get it. You need to read that. Do I need to get it? Okay. Well, I'll get it. Or like read that, and then it's Tom Hiddleston. It's a Tom Hiddleston series on Amazon. Okay. Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie. Like House. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Read the book, watch the series. Hmm. It is amazing. Like, I the will night have to do that. Legit. Yeah, I will definitely have to do that. Yeah, it's wonderful. I uh, uh, my guest uh, the other day said uh, the TV show Reacher is, is a really good one, and and books is Cocaine Godmother. Yeah, and I've heard of that one. Yeah, me too. I haven't read it, and then uh, I'm I'm actually gonna download it, and then uh, Twelve Rules for Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've heard of that one. one. I'm almost done with. Um, I currently listening to uh, uh, Zen and the uh. Art of maintenance of motorcycle maintenance or whatever it's called. You guys know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all keep yeah, talking. I about got that a book. I got a lot yeah. of those books. I have so many of those books. And I uh, I was given some of the motorcycle ones because all I had was motocross. Yeah. So like they they gave me some of those. So like I've read all of those. I got my little pin notes throughout it. Cause I like highlight sections and I'll pin it and add a, like an idea next to it. Like, yep, this is kind of what we're looking for and set up. And like I have like all of that set up to where that shark box is right there. Yep. The helmet boxes. I yeah, it's it. it's right there with my notes and stuff. There. The basic laws of human stupidity. <laughs> I would think that book would be a lot bigger than it is. It's literally it's yeah it's not that big. It's it should like be a dictionary, pages. okay? 
Yeah. It's 80 pages. Like War and Peace. Oh, I don't know. It's 80 pages. This is literally like somebody, like an Italian guy's college thesis. But it is hilarious. It is masterful. It is like mm-hmm. literally like that. It's literally, I, I read it probably once every three months. It's I'm awesome. Have to, yeah. I'm, I'm have to but again, check it out. that way you guys can remember. The basic laws of human stupidity. You have right? to read it. I can just go out in public and get it in five minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, right? Just look out. around. Sure. Me but driving I, to North Carolina. Okay, you, you see a lot of stupid people on the road. Drive through Nashville right now, and then come talk to me. Okay? I'm, good. I'm good. I already deal with Atlanta on a on a basis because all my right. doctors are up there. So I no koala. Um, <laughs> like I, I told you, he was gonna start coming up. Yeah, to the He's demanding. Yeah. Come well, on, I see him back there. there come on, say hi. Come here, koala. Koala, come here. Well, the other two are gonna push him away. Come here, koala. <laughs> You're not getting on camera. Mm-mm. You ain't getting the spot. He's thinking about it. Oh, there, there he goes. comes. There, there he comes. Go. No, Alpine. <laughs> Alpine's no. like, nope. Alpine's no. Like, I'm jumping in the lap. <laughs> no. Oh, I've got my sweater. They're mad. Yeah, so so listen, I, 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 as you're showing the dogs, man, we've actually had uh, some comments come in, and a lot of them are, are – uh, Dial Dial says, what's up? My man Chris Gladden says, what's up, everybody? Of course, Cameron Myers – uh chris lewis what's going on mate he, he's out there based in the uk he's a, he's a big supporter he's on here all the time so yeah absolutely uh junior bean says core pretty fast on the 85 when we met you mm-hmm. that's the i grew up with his daughter racing and uh we had we had some great battles together um and then she got really big into um uh, cheerleading and whatnot, um, and then I stopped seeing them at our local races, which is sad. We lost we lost a lot of a lot of our friends throughout the years in racing. They kind of got out of it, and it yeah. sucked. But it it's great to know that you know we still stay in contact for the most part. Yeah, that's awesome. And then Dow Brinkley, everybody knows Dow, right? What, what mm-hmm. he's awesome. He says, "Good evening, Chris, my gal Cora, May Man Mark, and Indy Daniel." I hope he's feeling better. I don't know he's had yeah. some health issues there. Hopefully he's doing well. Yeah, I do too. Uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I was he's thinking awesome. about you there, brother. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Good. So stuff. There's there's a war going on. Oh, I, I, see see I see. It's awesome. I got, I got five on the white one. Listen, I got five on the white one. <laughs> DraftKings says that uh, yeah, it's the. <laughs> the real the white one. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey. This is my life. Oh, but awesome. you wouldn't have and they just lie. make noise, okay? Yeah. I don't know if you could hear it, but they're just noisy. Oh, trust me. But, no, we can hear. That's yeah, awesome. Like, what are you talking about? Cruise in here, you want to hear some noise, right? You should. You <laughs> didn't, wait, listen. You didn't do it last time. Now that they're on here, bring them in there for just a second. All right. Let, let me go he didn't do this last time. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Here is, we go. He's nuts. Right. You have to see this dog. He, he's so funny. The, but now he sees your nuts. dog. <laughs> yeah, but now he sees your dog. He actually might. He'll talk. He won't stop. He will want to have a conversation with one of them. Yeah. Hey, I'm for Hey, Koala. Koala is going to be our track boy for the for this next year. So. Sweet. Sweet. So, Koala, I had him. He was my OG. I've had him since I was 17, almost 18. I got him for my... I, I wanted a dog for my birthday. Okay. Give me a look. But, so, we, we adopted Koala... Oh. And like the first weekend that we had him, we dragged him to a race. He's never seen, dude, this dog was terrified of everything. Like where you put him is where he stayed. He didn't move. He was just petrified, but he was used as a, a bait dog and stuff prior to yeah. us getting him. So he's been through some stuff. Yeah. Um, and we just threw him at the track. We we're like, you're either going to like this go. and it's going to work or we're not. Here so, go. oh, Lord. That's a big boy. boy. <laughs> Come on. I'll look at the other dogs. Yeah, so that's Cruz's thing every day. He's got to give hugs to everybody. Mm-hmm. That's a big that, That's boy. a little white dude. He's, He's the same way. Yeah. Little white dude's ass. That little white dude's like 95 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> um, but no, so like Koala, we would take it to the motocross races and 
my parents, you know, when I got, when I turned 18, they stopped coming to a lot of the races and whatnot. So it was just him and I, he was my co-pilot. Like my, my Ford Ranger seat was just his hair. Like nobody sat in his seat. That was his seat. So, um, we would go to the races. He's an off leash dog, super chill, loves everybody and anything. We'll just roll over and let you just obliterate his stomach. Just, just rub him. Like he just loved attention, but he knew when I would go onto the track and he would walk to the spectator area. I, I hear him. He's like, let me out of this room. He's, he's singing like, for you. Yes. He's, he's trying he to, he is singing. Uh, Listen, but go, go ahead, Corey. He wants out of that room. Right? He wants out of that room. He's, he's, like, he's, out. he's barking at that door. Again. He's like, if I had opposable thumbs, I'd be out of here. <laughs> he's like, let me out. Yeah, teach him how to open a door. Him. He's I'll always he always show, wants in, out. and now he wants out. I yeah. know, um, but no. So Koala would walk to the spectators area all by himself. Nobody would follow him. Nobody would lead him. He would just walk up to the spectator area and watch. No, no joke. He would sit there and watch me walk right on the track, and then walk back to my truck when he knew I came off. So finally, That's my- awesome. Yeah. So finally, my parents finally came to one of my races. Um, and no joke, my brother was like, well, don't we need to put a leash on him? And I'm like, no, just just wait. So I got on the bike and I go onto the grid and whatnot. And my parents, you know, they're grabbing their stuff and Koala just starts walking. And my mom's like, follow Koala because they've never been there before. And she's just like, well, follow Koala. Koala knows where he's going. And he's slipping between people's campers and stuff. And they're like awesome. having to walk around all that. Because everybody knew him. That's great. But, so they found out. They were like, no way. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, he's he's my he's my OG co-pilot. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, that's how we got the Chewbacca character. <laughs> right. Because literally, no, literally, George Lucas had a Mal- an Alaskan Malamute that would sit in the passenger seat of his Camaro. As he was driving around, and this Malamute, I've seen pictures of it. It's a 195 pound Alaskan Malamute. Oh, it's a humongous oh, dog. Yeah, so it's a, George oh Lucas God. and this 195 pound Alaskan Malamute driving in a Camaro, like a 68 Camaro. And he goes, "This is how this is going to work." And now we have Han Solo and Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, really? that's awesome. how it went. <laughs> I love. So, Cor, are you Star Wars fan? I am. I'm okay, a, okay. I'm a I'm a nerd. So me yeah, too. Me yes. too. So so I'm a big Star Wars fan, right? So listen, what what Star Wars character would Cora be? Ooh, good question. I don't know. What would you think? Me? Oh yeah. man. Well, okay. I, listen, listen. I, uh, you would not be a Jedi, but you would not be a Sith. You would walk that middle line to where, yeah, I could stray off of here and 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 do this, or I could stray off of here and 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 be good too, right? Because I, I could see I, that. I would follow that 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 same path, uh, for sure. It's it's it. Uh, what color lightsaber would you have Ooh. then? Because you know that's a big deal, right? Everybody's got the purples and, and the silver. No, and the one person has. Well, the one person. Yeah, like, <laughs> Mindy, you're right. Um, probably if if they could do any it, color. Blue. Yeah, any blue. color. Blue. blue or teal. Teal would be cool. Yeah. I that's that's the mild pink. color seat. Nah, ain't that girly? No. Oh, that girl. Oh, no. I like everybody pink. kept everybody kept trying to shove pink up stuff on me, and I'm like, I don't no. want to be listed as that. I said it's funny coming off of the track, and nobody knew who I was. So, like in particular, okay, this was a race in motocross. I was working for a bike dealership here um, in Macon called DNA Cycles, and his son raced as well. But we he was racing in Florida, so we drove down. Okay, I've never raced with these guys, and I just cut my hair short. Like, I mean, it was short. It was, like, chin length. Like, it was just short. I was just, like, I told, I went to the hair stylist. I was, like, just chop it. I was, like, I'm done. I was, like, I'm done. I'm over it. Just chop it. So, that same weekend, I went to this race. And it's a little local race. You know, it's not AMA or anything. Um, so nobody knew who I was. I never left the pit. I never, nothing. I was always by myself. So, but when I would go to the staging and whatnot, I never took off my helmet. I never spoke, you know, and I'll be honest. I look, I look like a, a, a little kid, teenager, like a little boy with my helmet and stuff on when you can't see my hair. 
Like, I'll be honest, I, I, didn't, I don't got assets, okay? I don't have assets. That was given to my sister. So, um, I love it. Corey, you're awesome. You know, that you're fucking awesome. <laughs> so they had no idea I was a chick, okay? So I go up there, and I'm like, I don't know any of these people, so I don't take my helmet or goggles off. So these goggles are tinted, so you can't see nothing other than what I'm wearing and just how abruptly short I am on this, you know, YZ250. Like, I, I could barely reach the ground. Yeah, it was YT, YZ250 two-stroke. I loved it. Yep. I loved I'll let her. you. Dude, I, <laughs> I, I get on the grid, and I didn't know the track, really, so I'm like three out, like three to the left of the doghouse, and we're just packed, because this was, I raced through different classes, this was the um, the 450 C class. And it's just stacked. And I was like, okay, you know, this will, this will be fun. This will be fun. I was like, I might get a good battle or two. I pull whole shot and gap them. Yeah. Yeah. And they still didn't know who I was, okay? So I go back to the paddock and whatnot. And the next race was the women's. There was only, like, two other women, so I didn't really do anything. But then the next race was 250C, Alpine. Can you the stop? The double team hit him right now. I, yeah, they are. My poor koala. Like Alpine, uh, Alpine he's getting, he's getting, getting, the getting the stereo yeah. there. He's getting the right and the left. Yeah. So I get warned by a vet because word got out that I was a chick when they realized I raced women's. They had no idea. So this vet walked up and was like, hey, there was a lot of talk. And they're like, He's like, I'm 99% sure they're going to try to take you out. Because I'm just a random person getting into a random series, like, midway through. And they're like, we're going out for blood. And I'm like, oh. I was like, well, good to know. Good to know. So I go out. I get in a great battle with this other guy on a, on a husky. Alpine, can you stop? Sir, please. No. What do you want? Um... <laughs> So I get in a great no. battle with this one dude. Yeah, my children. Yeah. You know, they're eh. but I get in this great battle with this dude. Him and I battle for first, like hardcore. Like we're back and forth through the whole track. But he wouldn't jump this huge quad and I would. I was just like, screw it, why not? So I would launch it and I, I won that one. Then the four fifty second moto came in. Um get on the grid same same thing the vet's staring at me like hey like you really need to watch out i'm like okay okay cool whatever you know um no joke i'm going down the straight and i was pulling hole shot and dude i just felt like somebody just sideswiped my swing arm and i just high sided like a mofo going straight like we weren't even in the corner yet and i just got creamed I didn't race the rest of the day. I was like, I'm, I'm dead. I'm good. I had my fun. I was like, I got work, you know, Monday. Right. So, yeah, that was a, that was an experience. So I get, I get a lot of like, is that chick? But I never wear, you know, a lot of girly colors or anything. Well, so there's no cue points in it. <laughs> oh, and I can attest to that because you were in white and black. And then a was it a like a Zarco helmet or a Zarko shark or helmet? Team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, Good. I follow. I was following you with Tally a while back. And I'm like, oh, there's Cora. Okay, I'm not gonna be a jerk. Fine, whatever. Get her done straight away. Be all right. So it's just like hearing that. And I'm just like, like, given the history that I have in whatever competitive sport that I've done, I'm like, keep up. That's all I can say. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, because like that, this whole that, that year, bucks. this whole year with we're uh, uh, my buddy Caleb and I. Okay, yeah. he's on he's on an R three. Him and I battled like the whole year oh, until have, the like, end of I the was year. Watching some of y'all's races, I was like, oh, this is about to get fun. Here yeah, like go. him and I down Robling down the straight to the finish line, and we're seriously like, I got videos of this. Like mm -hmm. we're neck and neck down the straight. I and heard about that we, race. Yeah, no, like those those ones are so much fun. Like we really get into it. Um, it's a because Roebling's his home track, so we really battle. Yeah. But once we figured out a lot of the the adjusting on the bike, dude, I just I left. I I started hey, to check out, and good. it sucked. 
you know, it sucked. But then, then I started having a battle with the experts, like at Atlanta, you know, when they, so Atlanta on the grid, the, um, I'm in starting in the hot pit there. But what they would do is when my class is coming up, he would let me go. Cause he's like, by the time it's completely clear. And then he lets me go. He's like, you're like 10 seconds behind them. So what he would do was let me out right as my class is passing. Are you starting? Okay. I'm, I vaguely remember this. You're starting where George is sitting, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right where he's sitting with the board, letting people know yeah, when yeah. they can get on and off. Yeah. Right okay. there at that track. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's a decent and we're, I'm, I'm, a, I get no run up that hill. So Absolutely. we're starting on no. on a dead stop right as we're about the incline. Um, so it was super cool that, you know, they would test stuff with us and see mm -hmm. what would work really well. And that worked fantastic because I'm not stupid. I stay to the far right. I'm like, I'm not getting sideswiped, you know, and I Thank look. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I look and I'm like, all right, good, we're clear. But I would get out pretty much to right where my grid position would be, would be yeah. right behind experts. So I'd be up there in the experts and I started battling with them and I had so much fun because we didn't move up to expert, you know, this last year because I was like, I don't want to start dead last and have to pass two classes to get to mine. I was like, that's going to be really hard and we're going to get really disappointed this year. And I was like, you know what, we'll just stay in the class that they're, they want me to stay in and we'll just run it. Cause I didn't want to stay in, you know, the beginner class, but we were like, like four rounds in, we're like, all right, we'll, we'll just stay and we'll just finish out the year. Cause we were still trying to figure out the landing gear whole thing. So, so for, for everyone who is listening, who hasn't been to run Atlanta and the, the conversation Cora and I just had, that's, I'm sorry, Cora, I'm doing this for the podcast, but like, You're fine. <laughs> it's, it's a little inside baseball where, where I'm talking, where she's getting let out is where the 35 mile an hour speed limit is done at road Atlanta. So when you cross this line with super bike, super sport, whatever pro class is going, they're to the stop trying to go up this hill and it's on a little bike. That's a legit hill. Mm -hmm. And trying to start from there is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, trying to go up this hill and then trying to go into the school of fish. That is the start of whatever race that's going on. In the chicane. Into you know? the chicane. Yeah. And then, we have to, <laughs> and then the fire, you know, Oh, have to oh yeah. I remember so, that. Uh, I was like the race before that. I was like happy. I was like, I'm done racing for the day. I was like, thankfully I was, I was the like, next that was race amazing. after that. Oh, so you had to wait. I was literally waiting, and then they said, we're not doing this anymore. I was like, and my buddy was in that race. I was like, oh, God. Anyway, we're done Oof. with that. Yeah, Cor that, you, that was Cor a whole you thing. and I are going to go back and forth with weird stuff all night. Oh, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> so, so let's say you got a race day coming there. What is your? How do you prepare for the race? Like, what do you eat? How do you get yourself mentally prepared for the race? Yeah, any, like, weird uh, nuances? Uh, you got to turn your socks like three sides, it, you know, inside right. out. Like inside out. Big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, uh, yeah. Like absolutely. what's our lucky trick? Yeah. Your lucky trick. So surprisingly, okay. This was our first race at Talladega. Like the one he was talking about early. I had our first day racing. I had won all three of my races. Like we were super pumped, excited at the end of the day. And this is Saturday at the end of the day, one of the track workers by the farm corner, if anybody knows Talladega GP, there's a little farm corner section. Farm horse. Was it yeah. a I, I'm not sure. I'm not blonde sure. Lady, blonde girl? No, it was a young gentleman. We'll talk later. Yeah. So um, he had walked up and I had no idea that this was a thing in this area, but they have four leaf clovers like everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere. Like you can find them. And he handed it to me. He's like, I already know you're having great luck with it, but he's like, here's this. He's like, I want you to succeed. And we taped it on the speedometer dash um, on the, on the bike. And it, and it stays there. I have not taken that off and I'm hopefully going to meet him again, you know, in March at Talladega. Have you um, seen him since? I had seen him the last race at Talladega, but he was in a different corner. I, yeah. 
I I will make that happen. Don't worry. Okay, because I was like, I need one. I need one for the ninja now. I need one for that bike. Oh, too. we can make that happen. Don't worry. Oh yeah, I, I'm 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 110 percent prepared for it. Like I needs it. I needs it now. But no. So for me to get ready, it really comes down to like our crew. So like our my best friend Taylor and his son Kyle. Those two are my main two go tos that love coming to the races and we've been friends for like three years now they're my basically my family but they come over we get the bike in the house i currently have a bike in my kitchen like right over there it's it's sitting in the kitchen um, as it should be yeah i know right if you want a woman in the kitchen put a motorcycle there and i'll be there all day all day you know all day i'll be in that kitchen Love um it. <laughs> so we would we would bring the bike in because I don't have a garage or anything, and it's you know it's cold. I was like I'm I'm too broken to be out there in the cold, so we would bring the bike in, you know, warm her up. She had to be warm, and we would work on it and get it prepared, and then we would roll it back out, load it up in the trailer. There's Koala. There he is. It's my old sword. Yeah. Um. So we would get that, and then usually like I'll start cleaning up my diet that week of. I eat relatively clean for the most part, but you know, I cheat, you know, I got to, I got what's to. your cheat food to go to. Oh, um, way too much steak and potatoes. Way too much. <laughs> Steak's not a cheat. The medium. I hope. A little bit. Medium, medium, rare. Cheat. medium rare. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude. If you, if you eat yours well done, you're, you're, you need to get a mental wife. check. Listen, that's no. my wife. I will tell you. Oh. I cook steak. Oh. It's that like hurts. 30 minutes no. each side. Yeah, that's, an a, that's an assault to the chef. Like, yeah, no, no, a no. chef will throw you out. A good chef will not cook yeah. you a well-done steak. No. He'll no, throw you out he's, of restaurant. Because he's like, it won't taste as well. Like, no. Like, facts. But I got to um, ask my wife one, otherwise she won't eat it. But which mm -mm, is No. In, in I'll cook favorite. you a shoe. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll, I'll put a broad on there. How's that, right? You need a broad. That would be me. Let's have yeah. some. Uh, we'll do that. Hey, hey, hey. I can make some boss ramen dough. Okay, I can make okay, some good ramen. Okay, okay. The well, egg and is... all, yeah, hey, okay, I go to okay. it. Okay. I'm to you know, poor that, poor I people. All my money goes to the bike, so I'm a poor person a ramen. But um, so no, the week of I'll clean up my diet. I'll actually eat chef eats from Jeff. Oh that's yeah, that's the right man. Dude. That's my job. So I, I knew man. him from racing yeah. streets and stuff. So like he was always a great friend doing all that and this year um he's helping us out with uh some stuff for the following year or this you know following year this year now i keep forgetting we're in 24 now yeah. <laughs> but no so he's helping us out with that and so i'll clean up my diet start drinking a bunch of water so we'll in we'll introduce a lot of creatine um yeah. that holds water in your system yeah. I've loved doing that, especially like during the endurance races, like I will absolutely down that and I don't get dehydrated or anything during the endurance races. And I don't take a sip of water or nothing in, in my, you know, hour marker. Um, and then, yeah, we'll load everything up and we're usually always late to showing up to the track. It's like almost like the middle of the night or like the times where Barbara closes the gate close. We're like showing up as it's closing. <laughs> I call us last minute Rookie. racing. Yeah, it's last minute racing. Okay, hey, leave us alone. <laughs> I got, hey, I got locked out of Barbara one night. No, they all build it like one particular time. They almost did, and I was like, "Look, I need to use the bathroom. Our campus does not have a bathroom." I was like, "I can't. You don't. You don't have an accessible porta john out here. So uh, you need to. We got to figure this out." I was did like, you put I'm the not... Borat accent on there with it too, or like, what are we doing? <laughs> Well, he was mean at first, and I was oh, like, I, "Dude, nope. I was like, I'm being nice." And I was hey. like, "You don't come at me like that." I was like, "That you're gonna start something you don't want." Hey, you got issues. I I will give you people you need to talk to. Don't worry. <laughs> I've been but, I've been working that. I have been working. Let, but I'll he let, let us in and whatnot, you know, because I'm not I'm not a cheater. I'm not gonna cut corners or anything, you know. I pay my dues um, as long as I remember them. Okay, as long as I remember. If Holler I don't remember, then yeah. Holler at us. But yeah, so we'll show up to the race, um, and then we'll just have our, you know, every every person's routine. It's nothing, anything in particular, um, other than just our extra additives about, you know, when we get to the track, how to how we're setting up the bike, you know, the basics, you know, getting me in the suit, 
because uh, I usually do that by myself. Um, I don't need help with any of that now. I, I used to. I've gotten way better at getting in and out of a suit. Let me tell you, it, it's a workout. Okay, you get your pre-workout before you even get on the You're track. Right, right. Okay. She's getting suited up an hour before so she's she gets in booted. That's yeah, <laughs> dude. Shepherd Center made one of my one of my therapy sessions of me getting in and out of my suit. We're talking this is a brand new suit, okay? Not even broken in and it's not even tailored. So like certain parts are like tighter than the other. Well, it's a nighter, it's a nightmare to begin with. Yeah, and I don't have an undersuit or anything. So I'm just doing it in like regular clothes. And there was one time my therapist was helping me get it up cuz this is like the first time we're putting on. It's no joke. My mom has a video of it. She picked me up and dropped me. So I like face planted <laughs> into the mat. Like, yes, and my mom has a photo of me just laying there, and I'm stuck because my arms are like halfway up it, so it's like oh, right here at that shit. awkward point, so you can't like move. And I'm like, Help, like, help me. <laughs> just random, random quick question How do you not? Okay, I'm assuming you have undersuit sponsorship now, yes, with 64 okay. degrees. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, There's no way on God's green earth you don't have that help now. <laughs> no, I, I met them at uh, the Daytona. Um, for the Moto A round this last year, and I met um, them at their booth. It's sweetest people. They're an amazing company. I've loved working with them, and they were able to like uh, get me an undersuit with my name and stuff on it. And I was super pumped. Uh, first time I wore it, dude, suit just went on like yeah, butter. Like, but I was like, oh yes. yeah, we got it. I was like, dude, this thing's sick. And I was like, why doesn't motocross have this? Right. Like, why doesn't, honestly? Yo, hey, Fox just unveiled some, like, one-piece thing. I saw I that. that. That looks sick. I had to ask sick. my motocross buddies. I was like, what is this? You don't it's have to worry onesie. about your, you don't have to worry about your jersey untucking. Yeah, but yeah your jersey's suit. not untucking yeah. or nothing. Because I literally, um, Rist and Greg, uh, one of the races yeah, um, at Minio's, yeah, at Minio's, his pants were coming down. So he was racing like with his pants like with halfway his down. Track. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, Gucci, all right, Gucci man, I'm gonna need you to pull your pants up. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah so it, it, this is Minio's, so it's not like a little race or Hilarious. anything. I mean, it's like yeah. a full on like we're we're this is national level. So like, yeah, that was, so that was funny. Cause we grew up racing and stuff together. We trained at Moto X compound. So it was, a, it, we, we know each other. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so, hilarious. But quick, that, that would solve that issue though. So yes, hey. it would. the ones he would. Yes. I've yeah. seen it. And I was like, yeah, I would, I, I would wear it to bed. I ain't going to lie. Right. Hey, it, no, 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 they, no, they no, have yeah, that, they yeah, have yeah, that silk like, kind no, of no, material. No, no. Yeah. 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 You never know, yeah. right? Yeah. No, so, doing that. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, Paul McKee, what is up, man? He says Cora was rolling last season. Would definitely be pulling for you a Moto America. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Hey. And, and, and then I have Absolutely. one by uh, Taylor Liv. I don't know why it didn't pop up That's here, but... Taylor Lively, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so big shout out to her. She said, uh, proud, to, proud of how she and I were able to get so many tracks to work. Uh, with us on her launching techniques definitely yes. grateful for all their support absolutely yeah oh yeah that it's proper so listen man we're, we're almost an hour and 30 into this let's yeah uh, <laughs> listen cora what an honor it is to have you on we'll definitely do a part two of this for sure hey so I, I am for on. it yes yes we have so much more to talk about oh um, god yes absolutely <laughs> so listen cora i need you to tell everybody that is listening to this now that's going to listen to on Spotify or All Heart or Podbean or wherever they're going to listen to it on, how they can find you, how they can support you, how they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. So I do have an Instagram and it's Cora88MX. I kept it from motocross. I ain't changing it. It's my OG. I'm keeping it. OG, okay? triple OG. I just realized my wheelchair is like way away from me. What? The dog's playing pushed my wheelchair away. <laughs> I mean, okay, so the gaming chair you're sitting in, does it have wheels on it? No. Oh, that's no. hilarious. Text message. <laughs> yeah, luckily, my mom literally lives like an acre away because, like, oh, I built my fine. house on like one of her properties. So, like, I'll call her and be like, yo, I, I need my wheels. You know, right. too bad. Come too, bad too bad he's not trained to get it. You know, that would be nice. We but, need a golden awesome, retriever. We got to right? do that. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Too bad. He, he, he not that smart. No. 
Well, <laughs> no, seriously. You should have seen well, no, us trying I, to teach him to sit. I was trying to, I, I had a joke formulating and it didn't formulate quick oh, okay. enough. So it's, no. forget it. <laughs> I got it's over. We're done. Well, but, Cruz ain't that smart neither. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Especially me. I'm not that smart either. It's fine. <laughs> Hey, we race motorcycles. I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're all not addicted the most intelligent to this. people on the no. planet. It's fine. Yeah, no, not at all. We're bike you know, smart. That's it's it, not, right? Yeah, we're yeah. we're not we're, we're not smart. that 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 yeah. smart, but we're like motorcycles. You know. Oh God. Oh, oh what is the, that? The, the stories I could tell you that <laughs> right corroborate that. <laughs> oh, if I see somebody's asking um, how old I am, I am actually yes. twenty four. Yep. Yeah, like twenty four as a ninety nine, baby. <laughs> child i know i don't even baby. say how old i am it's okay yeah. now i look really young because now i'm even shorter did, did you just hear what my wife said god damn it she come in here and said old as shit <laughs> look hey right, chris well, the only look you pick you got little, at the touch store. more gray know, right? yeah, in the beard than me that's all i got all right? yeah that's I'm, um, the I'm the youngest one here then <laughs> wow <laughs> it's okay i feel 90 out. okay i wake up in the morning and i gotta stretch i gotta <laughs> slowly crawl out of bed like it's a yeah, lot especially like... with him he's hard he makes me late yeah. to work a lot of the time hey in he... the great words of indiana jones it's not the age it's the mileage okay <laughs> there's a lot of miles there's a lot yeah there's a lot of miles yeah. um but anyway so the other places you can reach me is on facebook i got two different pages i have my um snappy strong which is basically from my injury all on um up until now it's pretty much all the same i post on to different stuff you just failed tech <laughs> <laughs> dolls awesome he yeah. gonna start, to start making shit up it's yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome um and then i have like my regular cora leonard i also the, i have my personal and my uh public account so if i don't add you as a friend on my um private account i'm sorry um but you can uh, definitely follow me on everything but majority of all my stuff's public i ain't got nothing to hide um <laughs> But yeah, you can follow us on me there. Um, you can also help us by either donating to the bike experience at teabags.org. Um, or if you want to help me uh, in this weird, outrageous uh, journey of Moto America this year, and you're willing to help a noodle out, um, go ahead and just reach me out uh, via any of my social media accounts, and I'll try my best to stay on top of responding to the messages that's awesome that's yeah, listen it, yeah it, you guys heard it right reach out supporter first season of moto america can't wait to uh see all her accomplishments and i can't wait to see her again and get up and real quick my dad told me to tell you hello cora and ross hello yes yes my dad i told him because my dad he flew in What's today? Tuesday. He flew in Sunday and he's leaving tomorrow. So I was like, dude, I got Cora on the podcast. He's like, it's about fucking time. That's what he told me. <laughs> it's about fucking time, right? So I know. Uh, I, he was so amazing when I met him at New Jersey. He is such yeah. an amazing person. I loved conversating with him in, in that cold, rainy weather. That was, right. I was miserable. I was just bundled up and I'm like, this. Sucks. And listen, everybody, I kept trying to say, Cora, do you want a jacket? I give my jacket. Do you need an umbrella? She's like, no, nah, I'm good. And I was like, Shoot, okay. paralysis? Okay, you lose sense of, like, temperature. That's what she told me. Yeah. yeah. So, like, unless it's, like, freezing, freezing, but I have to, like, pay attention because, like, my legs will go purple, like, instantly, like, icicles. Yeah. yeah. So Word like advice I, to everybody, don't ask, just do it. That's what I'm gonna yeah. do next time I see her. I'm wrapping her up. I'm bringing hey. a blanket just for you in Atlanta. <laughs> I got you, and in Jersey, especially in Jersey, I got you, hundred ten percent. But yes, listen, Cora, part two is coming up. Everybody, just stay tuned. What an amazing. Listen, your story is amazing, Cora. I love you Thank to you. death. I'm so glad that Ryan Snooks, big shout out to him, introduced me and you together. Uh, it was, yeah, proper. A absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so Perfect listen. time. Everything's fallen into line beautifully. Right, and I've, I've loved everybody I met. The community is amazing. It is. So it I'm, is. I'm happy with all the support and love from everybody. Me too. It's, it's, it's overwhelming for sure. So mm -hmm. listen, Mark, do you have anything? 
No, I just say hey, I really appreciate you coming on. Can't wait for part two. Uh, yeah, it's an I amazing appreciate story being and, invited. And, and listen, everybody that can help out, you know, get to, in touch with her. Let's mm-hmm. help her out for uh, our first year in Motor America. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy one. Just getting the bike set up is going to be a, a fun treat this next few weeks of, like, what are we, like, eight weeks out from Atlanta? Yep. <sighs> Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to see all you guys. I man, listen, when I show up at the track and I'm hanging out with you guys, I don't, I don't care about the racing. I just want to hang out with you guys. I yeah, know, right? My time with you guys, well, right? I'm going to give gonna you your time to go out there and, and get those W's. But when you come back, yeah, we're going to be chatting Kathy for sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You already know in the bits. Daniel, is there anything you want to say before we get off of here? Absolutely not. Cora, I'll, holler, I'll, I'll message you and about whatever it's no big deal <laughs> but yeah no um everybody needs to follow this one and help out as much as you can because this one's this one's this one yeah she's she's legit let's go come on let's do it y'all heard noodles it, right? on noodles, yeah. noodles, noodles. <laughs> everybody get their noodles <laughs> bowl of noodles we're doing up, it i'm going we're to bring it. you a a hoddle of pool noodles i dude i'm so for it we we were debating like no joke the bottom this, half of my suit right. to get ramen noodle print noodles. on it like we so debated on it That's i will find an ivan orkin thing and i could stickers and stuff <laughs> and so next Look, podcast right. will come up with some uh nicknames like cup of noodles ramen noodles, noodles ramen noodles yeah oh, we'll you can call something. me whatever noodle noodle yeah, hey, yeah. the Great last race for endurance, we uh, because I I raced by myself and I decided I paid for it myself, but um, I called it noodles instead of noodles. <laughs> noodles. That's awesome, noodles. I like noodles. It. <laughs> That's good. Um, stuff. but yeah, no, I love it. So yeah, me too. So yeah, listen, everyone, I I, I say it all the time. You guys see it on Facebook. I, I I always put the post out. I appreciate every guy, everyone. It what an honor it is uh real quick i gotta get give a big shout out to the clothing kings my man martin adams out there in the uk oh, yeah. uh i actually he sent me a uh a code uh one of these barcodes where yep he's actually uh our merchandise I don't have be, car, it's fine <laughs> yeah uh uh yeah they're the turtle so so our merch is actually going to be on his website so all you guys can go and buy whatever you guys want uh maybe even some turtles you never know hey. what's going to pop up, right? So, yeah, listen, this episode will be out on Spotify and iHeart and all that good stuff tomorrow. But, again, thank you guys so much. It, it's an honor to always have everyone here all the time. Absolutely. It, it's it been a great appreciation. Everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, Cora, I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can't wait for part two. You are simply amazing. So, everybody, yep, absolutely. go out there. Lover, supporter, buy her merch. Uh, she don't have one right now, but she will have. Some, oh, I'm, I'm right? working on it. We got Absolutely. stuff. We got stuff in. in I the can't books wait. Now. You already know. I need a T-shirt or a hat so I can wear it on the podcast. Mark and Daniel too. So yeah, I need a T-shirt Listen. with a with a wheelchair with a motor on it. That's what I need. What about the one that we've been wearing this last year with the the wheelchair and the flames that says? Look, uh, I- uh, oh my you goodness! Saw this and Damn. I've seen it, and I didn't get an opportunity to purchase one because <laughs> they were the team members. But we got we got some that we're we're gonna put out. Like, this, I can roll the tire warmer really well. Okay? Hey, right. hey, hey! We need the help as much as we can get this Look, year because we, it's literally we, just gonna be between Taylor and I and his. You son. and I will chat. So, yeah, we'll yeah, chat. We'll chat. Listen, okay. we'll, we'll oh, yeah. listen. <laughs> just stay on with me when I end this, and we'll we'll, we'll conversate about this. Okay, yeah. Cora. All right. All right. So yes, listen. Thank you guys so much, dude. Listen, everybody that comments all the time, I see the same people. I see new people. I love all you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you again to my man, Mark Sherm Dog Sherman. It, it, it's an honor in this lifetime to have him as a really good friend. And, and same thing with my man, Daniel Shoemate. Thank you so much, as always. And Cora, girl. Yeah, God yes. bless. Seriously, I love Thank you. you guys. I really do. I can't wait for part two. Until then. Everybody knows me. I'm Chris, the show Simcoe, my man, Mark Sherm, dog, Daniel Shoemake, and Cora Leonard. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't put your name. I didn't. Yeah. I yeah. Was yeah. Out. You heard that. Yes, let's go. I'll do it if you need to. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Uh,